Terrier, not very smart at all. He's a very bigoted skeptic, and he came to interview me for his most recent TV series in Britain. He had one against religion, a two-part polemic called The Root of All Evil, and his most recent series was called Enemies of Reason. Uh, it was about researching parapsychology and alternative medicine. Um, they didn't tell me it was called Enemies of Reason beforehand when they asked me to take part, but I've had enough experience of these negative uh, media treatments, and I'd seen his previous series that I was very suspicious, and I said I'll only agree to take part if it's a genuine scientific discussion about evidence, uh, and uh, if he's really open to discussing the evidence, otherwise there's no point. And they gave me a written, and I said I want it in writing, they gave me a written assurance that this was the case. So I agreed to meet him, and he came to see me. And he's, we started off, there was a handheld camera, they put us facing each other, um, and he started off by saying, he said, I dare say we agree about quite a number of things, Rupert. He said, but let me tell you what worries me about you. And I said, okay, what worries me about me? And he said, what worries me about you is you're prepared to believe almost anything, and science should be based on the minimum number of beliefs. So I said, well, okay, well, let me tell you what worries me about you. I said, you come across as prejudiced and bigoted, and I think you give science a bad name. So we didn't get much very far with that conversation. <laughs> so then he said, the trouble with telepathy is that people are, he said, oh no, then he said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. It's a standard skeptical slogan. So I said, well, what's the extraordinary claim? I said, the majority of sane, normal people in Britain believe they've had telepathic experiences. In that sense, it's not extraordinary, it's ordinary. Most people have had it. You're making the claim that most people are deluded about their own experience. Where's your extraordinary evidence for that? Uh, he couldn't produce any at all. You know, he just said, oh, people have a very false sense of statistics and probability and stuff. Generic arguments. Then I said, well, look, okay, why don't we get down to the evidence and actually discuss the evidence, uh, which is why we've met? He said, I don't want to talk about the evidence. And I said, well, why not? He said, there isn't time. And I said, well, we've got plenty of time. He said, it's too complicated. And I said, no, it isn't. He said, anyway, it's not what this program's about. And so I said, well, I, um, he didn't know, I'd sent him my papers, three or four papers, two weeks before, so he could look at them. He hadn't looked at them. And he was just trying to trap me into saying something silly and then put that on TV. Right. So I said, um, okay, well then, uh, then there's been a misunderstanding, because I said I didn't want to take part in yet another low-grade debunking program. He said, it's not a low-grade debunking program. It's a high-grade debunking program. <laughs> <laughs> so then the producer said, cut, and the cameras stopped rolling. And, and so um, then I said to the, 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 the director, um, is this a debunking program or not? He said, yes, it's another Richard Dawkins polemic. And I said, then you're here under false pretenses, because you told me it was about evidence. He said, I didn't. I said, well, your assistant did. He said, can you prove it? And I said, yes. And I produced the email with this. And I said, uh, I'm afraid... Um, there's been a serious misunderstanding. He said, well, I'm afraid I have to agree with you. That She should never have told you that. That's not what it's about. It's a polemic. Um, and um, I said, well, I'm going to have to ask you to leave my house. And I didn't sign a release. I wouldn't actually mind if all that was put on the TV. But I've written up an account of this. It's on my website. It's been published in several British journals. Called, uh, if you want to read the details, it's on an account called Richard Dawkins Comes to Call. Um, <laughs> But th that's an example, you see, of someone with a huge media presence, an enormous intellectual prestige, because a lot of people think he's an incredibly smart guy who speaks for science. In this area, whatever his virtues as a geneticist, he, it, he doesn't know anything about it. He's speaking from prejudice and ignorance. And, and that's a very bad thing to do if you are, as he is, professor of public understanding of science. It doesn't further a public understanding of science. And that, I'm afraid, is why the... The debate on this is not often based on evidence and very often based on prejudice, stereotypes and, and ignorance.